Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Josh of Many Things. My name is Josh, and I like many things. Um, a big thing happened. Uh, I finished the first draft of a story I've been working on uh, for the past month or two, and we are uh, getting ready to start editing and starting another story. And uh, for those of you that follow my channel, you'll notice that I have been streaming these writing sessions on both Twitch and on um, uh, on YouTube. So uh, I've had a couple questions asking about my writing setup, and so I thought I would go ahead and do a little video um, showing how or what what's showing what software I use and how I have it set up. So let's begin. So the program I use for my writing is called Obsidian. It is a um, note-taking app with just customization out the wazoo. So uh, to get it, you go to obsidian.md and go to download, and you can put it on iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So covers all, all the bases there. Um, you just click on download, and then it, it downloads. So when you open it up, you'll have a, a screen like this that will have um, you know, where you'll create a vault. A vault is basically like the the file, the the folder that everything's going to be saved in. Um, like the next one down is open folder as vault. So if you already have a project you've been working on and it's saved in a specific folder somewhere, you can just open it up that way. Um, now, Obsidian uses Markdown uh, for its formatting, so uh, that's something to be aware of. <laughs> if you use a lot of indents um, with your writing, it, it, it it's kind of hard to break the habit. Anyway, so you create a new vault, name it, whatever you want. I left mine as just Obsidian Vault. And you click on it, and it takes you to a welcome welcome screen, and that's basically it. Um, now, like I said, this is a note-taking app, not necessarily uh, a writing app. But the thing I like most about Obsidian is the plugins. We're going to go over those right now. You come down here to the settings, which you can't see because my face is in the way. Move it up. Um, right down here is the settings, and that brings you up to your general where you can check for updates, do all kinds of stuff. Got editor files, links, appearance, where you can change it from light to dark theme and stuff like that. And then you have your core plugins. Uh, these are the ones that come with obsidian and you can turn them off and on however you want uh, i pretty much just have them all on it doesn't really matter i don't think there's a couple of them that i do recommend for sure though um first one being templates uh, because we'll get into it templates is a big one i recommend keeping on um search you know, publish. You don't have to keep publish on, but if you're writing and you're uploading to your own blog or something like that, um, that will put a little thing over here that looks like a paper airplane. You'll click that and it will allow you to upload it straight to your website. So, uh, file recovery, I think, is pretty important to have on uh, just because you never know. But we'll also get into that in a minute. But where Obsidian really shines is the community plugins. It's got almost 1,800 plugins that you can choose from, and those will change a lot of how you can use Obsidian. Um, we're going to go over the ones that I like. Uh, the first one that is very important is long form. Long form will take your story that you're working on 
and put it so that you have your different chapters, or each note a different chapter, and then you can compile those into one folder or one file. So that way you're not exporting 50 different chapters as 50 different files. So I think that's probably the, the first one I would get. Okay, back over here. Next one I highly recommend would be, uh, let's do novel word count. Okay, this one is pretty cool because it will put your your word count um, over here on the um, next to your 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 file your folder and you can customize it to show like how many pages that equals how long it would take someone to read it things like that uh, red pen is another one i would recommend uh, because it um, it's a proofreader so it doesn't do anything for you besides show you where you can improve so if we come over here i have it turned on and you'll see over on this side it will show you i need i have 131 phrases that could be intensified three phrases that use passive voice zero phrases that are difficult to read and two phrases that could be simplified and you can adjust those parameters uh, for uh, like young adult. You can you know you do like a twelve year old, um, fifth grade reading level, sixth grade reading level, things like that. That's all stuff you can do in the plugin. Uh, so you can click here, and you can adjust the readability. All right, now I just have it in the middle. Didn't really adjust anything, but. That would be that one. That, I haven't started using that one just yet because I haven't started editing my story, but just so you know. Um, another big one would be remember cursor position. Uh, because for me, I go back and forth between a bunch of the chapters to double check something. If I place my cursor in the middle of a file and then go back to the file I'm working on, I can go back to that file and the cursor will still be there. It won't be up at the top or at the bottom. It'll be right where I left it. Um, Soundscapes is pretty cool. Uh, that basically just puts a little bar down here where you can choose different um, YouTube-based uh, sounds. So we got lo-fi beats. Which I guess that's it. Uh, lo-fi beats we got jazz we got a spa atmosphere there's a um, you can also do add music and it will play songs added to a folder which is nice especially if you're streaming um, most of, I believe all of these are copyright free or able to be used on YouTube anyway uh, the my music one I currently am using the uh, Heartbound soundtrack that I purchased from uh, uh, Pirate Software Studios. Another big one I use for my editing is text-to-speech because it helps to hear what you've written said back to you. I've already, testing it out, I've already noticed a couple places where I forgot words. <laughs> so um, that's just something that I think is, is nice. It's a, just a different way to, to see your, your story. Typewriter scroll is another big one that I use. What that does is if I am if I am typing, hello, it, it keeps the cursor in the middle so my eyes don't have to move. And it also, as you notice, once I go to a new line, it it dims the, the line before it. And if I type something else here, and then come back up, it highlights the, the line I'm working on. So it's kind of a, a focus style app. So I like that. Uh, next we have writing goals. And this one I think I, uh, I'm i gonna show you how to set it up because it is different. We add a file to the Goblin Sapper thing. 
and let's call it uh story idea okay if i want to to track uh my word goals which would be the these um these dots that you see here you have to have a um, file property and so you go to these three little dots go to add file property and mine's already been set up but you could type in word dash goal and then type in what your word goal is so 1500 it's just a standard one and what that will do is that will make it so that your um whenever you're typing hello there it's got this add-on that you can click up here and it will show you how many words you've written and as you get closer to your goal it will fill up which you can see here once it gets all the way filled it turns green just a visual visual thing um i like to use the pomodoro style uh, when i'm writing and there's two of them i would recommend that i have found i, I think i've tested just about all of them um, because i do a lot of my writing on streams i use uh, word sprint you download word sprint you turn it on you can go in here you can adjust how long you want your sprints to be you can have it set up to like encourage you if you've kind of stalled out um you can insert a daily goal and an overall goal if you want and also it uh incorporates into nanorimo so you can log in with your nanorimo username and password and as you write it will update your 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 file on the nanorimo website so i think that's pretty cool too uh the big thing with it is that whenever you're using it just this one right here it's got um, a nice big timer and when you're writing when you hit the end of your your time it puts up a um a screen that stops you from writing so that's something i like because otherwise i will keep writing <laughs> i'll try to finish off the sentence i find it helps if i just stop mid sentence and or even mid mid word um because then i go back and i reread what i just written before i continue on um and it keeps hold of your stats so it'll show you how long you wrote for how many words you wrote um and it keeps keeps track of it so you can kind of see how you did but um i like that one another one if i'm not streaming i like the status bar pomodoro timer with this one you can put how much time you want how long you want your breaks um your long break and how often you get that long break which the other one does not do it has an automatic an auto start timer so that it goes from one to the uh, to the next for this one you it'll put a little button here click on that and then way down here a little tiny tomato with the the time and as that goes it will make a noise at you whenever it finishes and then it starts the five minute break right away and then you know that's it the thing with that is though it doesn't like stop you from typing so if for some reason you didn't hear it you may look down and realize that you're on your break and didn't realize it so that's but i, I, I like that one too because it, it automatically does the breaks for you otherwise with that first one the writing sprints it uh you have to manually adjust the time okay now for a big one enhanced export and i'm going to go over how to set this one up because i spent a whole afternoon trying to figure that out so you download in uh, enhanced export from up here so you type in enhanced export and it's by yish you install it then you have to go to options and here's the big thing you have to go and download pandoc go to installing pandoc download the latest installer uh, and that should do it 
or you can go to GitHub and come over here to 3.21. This is what I did. Um, find your operating system, click on it, and it will download a zip file. From there, unzip it to wherever you want. And then you have to come back up here and to the Pendoc path, click on the folder, and maneuver yourself to wherever that file is. In this case, I just left it in my downloads. And just select the pendoc.exe, and then you should be good. I, I couldn't tell you how long I spent trying to figure this out. But anyway, um, another one that I like to use is this um, editing toolbar. And you don't have to use it, but if you're used to working in uh, word processors, this you'll probably be more from, better familiar with it. But it, that's what this little bar is up here. This is the enhanced toolbar. There's a couple things I really like about it. That being these two buttons here. So you got a workplace full screen and a full screen focus mode. And when you put them both together, if I do work screen focus mode, that is this, right? The workplace full screen is this. They look real similar, but when you do both of them at the same time, there's nothing on your screen except for what you're typing. So if you really need that extra focus, this combined with that typewriter um, setting, I think is really cool. Uh, it's got bold, italic, strike through, underline. It's got highlighter options, uh, text color. Uh, you can attach files, things like that. So, okay. So, those are the plugins I, I recommend. There's a couple other ones that, if you want to pause and look through my installed plugins, uh, enhanced, uh, we've got Family Fantasy Name Generator if you're bad at coming up with names. You install this. And then when you're trying to think of something, you hit control P, type in name, and then you can choose like an elf, orc, human, or dwarf name. You can specify whether it's male or female, but if you do like an orc name, then it just, it fills in a name. <laughs> so um, I use that whenever I can't think of something. Um, font size adjuster, I only got that so I can make my font a little bit bigger, easier to read on stream. Um, beyond that, I think that's just about everything I use. Okay, so we're starting a story. Great. Are you a plotter, pantser, or planter? If you're a plotter, I have a list, I have a template that I will leave in the description. Um, that you can download and put in your um, Obsidian folder, or not. You can convert it to, uh, I'll put both a, uh, like a Word doc version and a the MD file, the markdown file. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take that, put it into a folder called templates, and so these are all the different plotting methods I've, I've got. And again, my face is covering it all up. Let me move that over to up here. So here's all the different templates, plot templates. And if you click on them, they have a little, little information about what, what it is and then kind of goes into details on what each one is. Um, uh, anyway, so you take the templates folder, you come up here to core plugins, go down to templates, turn that on, and then template folder location, and you want to select where your templates are at. Now, you create your folder for your story, create a note. Again, I call this one generating story idea, and come over here to insert template. Click on that, and it's going to bring up each one of those files as a different different template. 
So if you like the snowflake method, click on that, and it's going to come here and uh, give you something that you can write in to help flesh out your story. Um, if that's not what you want, control A, delete, go back over here, and you can try a different one. If you are into the uh, index card method, then what I would do, because this is just a real small, it's just project name, plot point one, I recommend coming over here to the canvas. Okay. Here at the canvas, there's two things I really like about it. One is you can add a note, let's say uh, plot point one. There you go. Move this around. Over here, add a card, plot point two, so on and so forth. And you can line it up. It's got little lines so you can keep it all pretty. Uh, plot point 40 or 33. All right, cool. And you can uh, do these all over the place. And then let's say that there is something like maybe a, a point of view character change or something, uh, but something happened early on, say in plot point two, and you know that it's going to affect something in plot point three, you can just draw a line down or say the, the plot, the point of view doesn't pick back up until 33. You can do something like that. Another thing that you can do with uh, with this canvas is um you can make a mood board out of it which is what i did with my story so i got a little mood board of different sci-fi um and hard detective stories just a couple of covers here to give me some inspiration so let's say we're going to make a board that has something about me or about uh, the main hero so let's do super handsome hero there we go and here i can add um you know i can i, I can do like a, a character sheet here uh again like an inspiration board something like that i think it's pretty cool uh a lot of lot of things you can do with this system uh if you had like say like another person and you wanted like a secret uh like they're they're brothers or uh, like uh, Darth Vader's Luke's dad, you can, you know, add a line and be like, and add something, edit the label to, to mean something. Another cool thing to look at is the uh, mind map. So this is going to have a whole bunch of stuff in it. So here's the graph view. Uh, this has everything that's happening in the vault, so just be aware of that. Um, if you have a whole bunch of stories going on, like everything in the same universe, if you have like a series that you're writing, then you can use this to double check things. So I can come over here and I can type in uh, the name of uh, like my main character's missing sister, right? So I can go. Daphne, and it shows me they were mentioned once in chapter 12 and in part one where I had put like their name. So uh, knowing this, that I know I need to go back and mention her by name earlier on in the story. Um, so yeah, that's just something to, to think about with the graph or mind map view. Um, of course, everything is movable. It doesn't really affect anything. Um, anyway, uh, I think that's a pretty cool thing. Okay, you've written your story. Congratulations, you are finished. Now what? You write... Done. You come over here to long form. Here it has your your different files. 
So I know I need to go in and delete the generating story idea part one, part two, part three, part four. I need to delete those, just leave the chapters. Come over here to compile and just come down and hit compile. And what that will do is that will take all of those scenes. I'll do it right now. And it puts it all into one giant note. Okay. One ginormous note. And from there, come up here and you go to export to. And now because we have that that one plugin working, we can export it as a markdown file, HTML, PDF, uh, a Word file, open office, EPUB, whatever it is you want to do. So uh, you can rename it however you want and export it. And that's it. Now you're ready to send it off to an editor or send it to your beta readers, alpha readers, uh, print it out yourself um, if you want to. But that is that is how I set up my file. Um, yeah, that's, that's really it. Nothing too hard about it. But I had a lot of questions about it, and I wanted to show everyone how to set up certain parts of it. For instance, that export tool, like I said, took me forever. Um, the word word count that took me like 30 minutes and I, if i could save you that time then i wanted to do that anyway um but yeah my my story is done with the first draft so if you are interested you can watch me editing or writing on mondays and wednesdays here on youtube or over on twitch which is Josh of Many Things over there. And uh, keep an eye out because once this is done, it'll be getting published. So um, thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a great day.